Hey there guys, long time no see. Uh, there's been a, quite a few reasons for my absence. Uh, the first of which you actually may have seen a video on my Jeep engine having a really, really bad knock. Which actually ended up turning out to be a rod knock, so the engine needed to be replaced. The other reason, as you can see here, is the amount of snow, which is just unbelievable right now. We've gotten about four feet of snow in the past week. Um, right here, you are actually looking at the Mud King's tractor. It is indeed under there somewhere. Yeah, there's the seat. Um, pretty much everything is buried. Uh, my lawnmower graveyard is right over there, buried. This is my trailer, completely buried. And my shop is almost buried. Um, it's, there's snow about halfway up the wall now. But real quick, back to the Jeep motor. Um, that thing set me back quite a bit in many ways, uh, financially and just with work and videos and everything, it really, really sucked. Uh, the vehicle was down for about a month in total. Uh, it took me a little while to source a motor, the exact motor for my truck, and I had to do some engine top swapping and stuff, which I'll tell you about in just a second. And actually, here's some pictures of the process. I didn't videotape any of the process because it was absolutely miserable. I did the whole engine swap in my driveway in January, which is just the most horrible way to do anything. It was extremely freaking cold the whole time. And you can see by these pictures, uh, the weather really wasn't working in my favor. It just kept snowing on me and it was just brutal. But the Jeep one's really good now. It actually runs better than it ever has. The new lower end is in really good shape and uh, everything went pretty smoothly once, once I got all the parts. Here's the old motor, or most of the old motor. It's actually hanging here by my homemade engine hoist that I've uh, used many times in the past, pulling Honda motors and things of that nature. But yeah, the motor's sitting out here totally exposed. There's no oil pan. I took the head off. It's no big deal because uh, this thing's pretty much grenaded. I don't know if you can see this but right there. That's the number one piston connecting rod. And the bearing just spun right out of there. Here's some pictures of the uh, chunks of bearing that were left on the bottom of my oil pan. It just looked like chunks of uh, beer can all crinkled up and thrown in the bottom. So really, other than that connecting rod and the crankshaft, the rest of the motor is actually probably fairly good. I did lose a lot of oil pressure right at the end, so probably all the bearings in the cam are shot. So. That block is probably probably going to go to the scrap heap unless I can sell it to somebody that really wants it. Oh, so here in the garage, you can see the blowing drifting snow has actually blown through my doors and covered a lot of my stuff in here, which kind of sucks. Snowblower's been getting its work out this year. I tell you what, this thing's been running really good. 10 horsepower, old school Tecumseh engine. Uh, it's got a legit uh, five-speed gearbox in it. The impeller in this thing is 14 inches. I showed you guys this snowblower before, but this thing is, is probably big enough to pass your firstborn child, uh, dual augers and everything. It's, uh, it is in fact a tank. Now inside the garage here, nothing's really changed since the last uh, build video here on the uh, redneck side by side. You can see that tons of snow has blown in underneath the garage door. And it's just kind of invaded the floor space here in my garage. Pretty much the same idea over here. You can see this is a window in my garage and this is the level of the snow so it's uh well this window on the outside is probably three feet off the ground plus we got about another foot here so there's about four feet of snow leaned up against this garage right now and you can see some of the snow was even kind enough to blow in through the crack in the very bottom it's a very very small crack too it's like a quarter inch wide but it it blew enough snow in here to really really screw things up for me i wasn't expecting this at all here's a look out the other window there might be even more snow up against this side. You can just see the snow just blowing and drifting off the top of the shed and just... This is winter in Maine, folks. And here's the redneck side by side. As you can see, since the Jeep problems, it has temporarily become a workstation and basically a workbench where I can throw all the parts for spare motors. And this is actually the top end to the new motor I got. Um, since 2000 Cherokees have a huge problem with head cracking, this one had an original head on the motor I got, but the motor had lower miles, so the head hadn't cracked yet. So I decided to do a little preemptive maintenance and yank this head and basically the whole top end off of the brand new motor, took the head and all the top end off of my motor, the one that I blew, and put it onto the new motor. If that's hard to follow, then I'm sorry, but um, basically the new motor in the Jeep has got all the best of the good parts from both engines.
I'm really sorry for shaking this camera, but I am shivering because it's like 20 degrees out here and I'm wearing a sweatshirt, which is why you haven't seen any videos from me lately. It's just god-awful cold, way too much snow, and I've had way too many problems with everything else. Um, but hopefully that'll, uh, things are starting to settle down a little bit now that the Jeep's fixed. I can spend a little more time in the garage. I think the temperatures are going to start staying in the 20s instead of below zero Fahrenheit. Um, so that'll be nice. So hopefully once I get these engine parts uh, cleaned up, I'm going to sell some of this stuff. Maybe the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold. I could probably sell this head because it's uncracked. I can get rid of all this crap so I can start working on the redneck side-by-side -side again. Since this project with the Jeep uh, set me back probably 600 bucks, uh, budget's gotten really tight on the redneck side-by-side. -side. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do the motor I wanted to do anymore, which is really, really disappointing to me. Um, but I do have another idea in mind, which will cost a little less, but I still think will be okay because, uh, like I said, this isn't going to be a fast build. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do snowmobile engine, ATV engine, street bike engine like everyone wants to see. But um, it'll still be mobile and I think it'll still have enough power to do what we want it to do. And even some trail riding too. So that'll all be really good. But yeah, that's the video for today you guys. Uh, unfortunately, until I don't have four feet of snow on the ground, there's not going to be any romping videos because I can't get my four-wheel drive Jeep through the snow, let alone a two-wheel drive, lifted lawnmower, or anything of that nature. So. Please stick with me. I know it's rough not getting any videos right now. Believe me, it's rough living in this hellhole. So just stay with me, guys. We'll get back to work soon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.